today is certainly the day of trophies here on Morning Live because Mamelodi Sundowns are the inaugural champions of the African Football League after they comfortably beat Moroccan side Widat Casablanca over the weekend. And to talk to us about the success of Mamelodi Sundowns, the runaway train, we are joined by the head coach, Coach Rulani Mugwena. Coach, a good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning to your viewers and good morning to you, V. I want to start and just talk about the AFL. I mm. mean, just the level of competition um, that you had to go up against to eventually get to the point where you lift this beautiful, very heavy trophy, I'm told by you. <laughs> yeah, it's extremely beautiful. Um, yeah, the AFL is, is I, think, I think, from a concept-wise, I think uh, a lot of um, compliments and credit needs to go to the CAF leadership and... Uh, in particular, Dr. Patrice Mutsipe for, for, for the concept, the idea behind it. And also, if you look at how it looks to, to not only benefit the football players and the football clubs, but also give a, a lot more commercialization and, 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 and help the clubs mm. uh, of, of the member associations under the CAF umbrella to be able to sustain themselves financially. And to be able to grow and sustain themselves and also to put South, and South African football and also African football on a, on a global stage. And I think uh, it's fantastic. It's a fantastic concept and it was one that we really enjoyed playing. And you speak about enjoying playing it. I mean, we enjoyed watching it oh, because yeah. <laughs> it was some of the most beautiful football we've seen in a long time. But let's talk about how difficult yeah. it was for you, particularly when you look at the away encounters that you had to go through as Sundowns. Yeah, well, it's difficult. I mean, it's a very difficult competition because, uh, well, I know with, with the startup and I think there's plans to expand it and invite a, a lot more teams. But of course... Uh, as a startup, it was the top eight ranked uh, teams in, on the African continent. Mm. And then you play games against teams that are normally, of course, teams that you would probably play in the semifinals or probably even in the, in the, in the finals, like uh, Petro. You, we went there and we went to, to Angola. It was very, very difficult. Mm. We had a very difficult encounter against al Ahly and Cairo. And then, uh, for sure, the most difficult was uh, Casablanca, you know, like the crowd and the atmosphere there. They make it extremely difficult for your, for your team, not only from a, from a, from a technical, tactical perspective, but the, the communication and, and even to the hostility that they create. But uh, certainly one that has helped us as a team to, 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 to come closer together and to, to, to rely on each other and to work a lot harder than we, we normally would in, in, in many of the games on the domestic front. And I mean, we could see that from just watching Sundowns play. You could see that each and every single player on the field was playing for their teammates. But mm. talk to me, Coach, about you come into the second leg of the final. You know that you're 2-1 down. What was your thinking going into the second leg clash? And, and what were you saying to the boys? Yeah, it was, it was, it was a very... Because we know you. You're a motivator. <laughs> Take us back. <laughs> I probably don't even remember what I was saying because I've, I, I said quite a lot during the week. The most important thing was to believe, uh, to believe that we could do it, you know, we could, that we could overturn the result. We knew the type of opponent that we played. Fortunately, the experience of uh, the previous season's Champions League was something that we could rely on, mm -hmm. knowing that we had gone to Casablanca the season before in the semifinals and, and, and come back with a 0-0, even though we were... We had received two red cards and it was very, very difficult. But having gone to Casablanca and not scoring an away goal was big for us. And mm. so, so the, the penalty that we got, which we duly deserved, and, yes. and maybe even one or two other chances we could have converted in, in, in Morocco, that gave us that sense of belief that here in Pretoria, with our crowd and with our people, uh, we could overturn the result. But, but we knew we had to play well. We had to play well. We had to get the crowd on our side. We had to get rhythm and momentum because that's one of the things that the North Africans are very good at is, is trying to delay the game and, and give it a stop you start. A thing or and two? <laughs> well, uh, we, have to, game? we have to improve. <laughs> we have to improve and understand how, how to play the game, you know. So mm. you've got to understand your opponent. And that's why the book, The Art of War, is still a book that's lived for, for many decades, you know, because it gives you 
a lot more secrets into how how to go into battle mm. and uh, understanding the opponent's strategy and maybe even being able to use their own strategy against them is something that uh, has made a lot of businessmen even from uh, from that type of space extremely successful so it's something that we incorporate and we try to improve and and try to get better as a team and we must commend and congratulate you as well and i i, I know you struggle with being complimented on an individual basis but coach mcguena since you took the ball by its horns becoming the sole head coach at mamelodi sundowns the work that you've done is absolutely amazing let's talk to does it start building up pressure on you now moving forward because You've dominated local football as Mamelodi Sundowns. You went and you played in AFL, didn't play in the league. Mm -hmm. You're going to come back to the league and you're still <laughs> sitting comfortably at the top. Yeah, well, there's always pressure, but pressure is a, pressure is a privilege because we, we are under pressure in the sense that uh, from a football sp perspective, we, there's an expectation that we must win for sure as Mamelodi Sundowns, but there's a certain way that we want to win. Uh, I was incredibly touched and humbled by the words from uh, the president of FIFA immediately on the stage. The first thing he said to me was, this team plays incredible mm -hmm. football. And that was extremely humbling and it's a message that I conveyed to the players and to the rest of the technical staff. And, uh, and this is what we want to try to do. This is what we think and we feel football is about. It's about evoking certain emotions, uh, trying, to, trying to make people connect with the, with the game and with the club and, and particularly with the, the culture that is associated with the, the Brazilians and the Samba boys. So it, it's very important that we, we align ourselves closely with the objectives of the football club and the objectives of the club are very clear to, to try to win expand our our reach into a global space but also to 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 win playing a certain way of football and that's what we have to try to do all the time shoe shine and piano that's a certain <laughs> level of football coach ulani mugwena speaks about coach i want to touch a little bit in terms of your philosophy because i've heard you say once before that you sometimes try to get to a point where you always remember that football is just a game at the end of the day why is that so important for you well, I think I think maybe it's because of my upbringing. You know, I grew up in a in, a, in an area in Soweto, Orlando West, where we just played football. You know, we we loved football, and I come from a football family. You know, so so the culture of um, my late grandfather, my uncle, my father being involved in professional football, and and uh, my mother being also football obsessed you know that that created this 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 sense of enjoyment you know and when i started playing football i started playing football because i loved the game you know and and that's those are the feelings that i try always to to feed off to the players that uh, at the end of the day we want to win for sure we want to win and uh, we represent a club that's got uh, excellence about it and that wants to be successful but but at the end of the day we've got to remember that we've got to enjoy what we do mm. and enjoy participating and and then that tries then to hopefully evoke those same emotions into the people that love us and support us and and uh, and we try to play the game the way we we feel it should be played and 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 uh, it has a lot probably to do with my upbringing and my feelings about the game and, and something I think that stands out with this Mamelodi Sundowns uh, side is just the quality of players that you've got. Because you had players that were participating for Bafana Bafana. You played a game on the Wednesday and you were still able to put on a solid team on the field, taking an encounter against Galaxy all the way to a penalty shootout. But I also want to touch on when you look at the AFL and what you've done there, there was an encounter where you played 10 men and your opposition said, they kept on looking and saying, <laughs> Are there actually 10 men for Sundowns playing here? Because the way the team was still coming out, the way you were playing, controlling the game, you would probably think you had 12 players instead of 10 even. Well, yeah, the TS Galaxy game still, still leaves a very sour taste in my mouth. I think, I think that, that is ridiculously uh, impossible to ask a team to play the following day after. Uh, it's national team, and I and I and I, and I still have a, a little bit of a of a, of a so <laughs> scar inside my heart every time I think about that encounter, you know. And 
and and the reasons leading up to why we had to play. But 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 yeah, we're here to to focus on the positives. And and when you speak about the players, you, you for me, I think first before. You've got to speak about the quality of and, and, and the expertise that's around the players and the team around the team. Mm -hmm. We've got an exceptional technical team uh, that is supported by an exceptional uh, club structure that is made up of the Mutsupe family, our chairman, uh, the board and the senior management, Brastan uh, Education and, 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 and those type of people. But also you go into, into the direction where you've got to speak about our technical team with, with Coach Mangnova, Coach Wendell, Coach Michael, Coach Temba in the DDC that also assists with the first team training and the players that are left over. And, uh, and an incredible analysis department led by uh, GV and uh, with some incredible people like Mario and, and Spoo Makitla and Dale who, who travels uh, the entire continent for us uh, to try to get as much intel as we possibly can. And then, of course, the medical department, you know, Saki, the doctors, everybody, you know, we've got an, an extensive, an extensive technical team. And I would take up so much of your time if I were to name them by, by name. But from, from the security guards all the way to, to the ground staff, to the kitchen staff, about Sis Aurelia, they, they make incredible work in, in supporting all this All protocol observed. All oh, protocol observed. Everybody. We ran out of time. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us this morning. Congratulations. We look thank forward you. to seeing what you see still yet to do this season. Thank you and uh, massive congratulations to this fantastic group of players, amazing human beings and thank you very much for having us. Indeed and we saw that sha sha effect also <laughs> coming through in the final on Sunday and of course Rodan Mugwena always does his homework. You should have heard him at one press conference when he had to respond to a journalist speaking about Al-Akhi.